All right, so what did I do different with this drawing? Well, if you're like me and you've done a lot of drawing over a number of years, then you've probably got used to doing things the same way. And there are lots of good advantages in that when we use the same type of materials, when we draw the same sorts of subjects, when we do things the same sort of size, then we get to really hone in on the elements of drawing that we're using. Repetition done thoughtfully is a great way to bring improvement. If we're looking at what we've done and we're, we're working to refine it with the next subject that we attempt, that we take lessons learned from what we've just done, then certainly keeping things the same. In fact, is one of the things, one of the strategies I advise in fast tracking our drawing improvement. And for me, that means I've done a lot of drawings in about 30 to 60 minutes using a 0.3 millimeter pen because it shows up well on the camera. It's, it's a thick enough line to be clear and it's thin enough to be able to do some detail. However, I realized that one thing I had begun to do in probably in response to the series of videos I've been releasing on five to 10 minute drawing exercises, suitable subjects to do daily, which with the feedback I've been getting is an incredibly helpful way and fast way to improve. And I'll actually include a link to the playlist at the end of this video, if you want to have a look at that. But because I've been doing those drawings, which by definition are fast exercises, I realize I've actually been shrinking the size of the other drawings that I've been doing. And again, there are advantages in doing smaller rather than larger drawings. But it occurred to me that I was actually struggling with the pen I was using to draw the detail that I was wanting for the size I was doing. So after I did some playing around with detail for this subject, which is the French Cathedral in Berlin, one of the two almost identical churches facing each other on the Gendarmen Markt. And I suddenly thought, why don't I use a 0 0.1? And my previous experience of using that was that it was very scratchy and didn't give a good enough line, but I actually discovered that that was because it was half dried out. So I found an unused one. And by switching the pen, I've been able to get, I think, a much happier level of detail and a greater finesse just in the overall effect in this drawing than I would have been able to get if I'd kept using my heavier pen. I often say as a principle, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you're really happy with everything that's happening, then that's great. But if there's areas of improvement that need to happen, then something has to be tweaked or adjusted or changed or even shaken up completely. Now with this drawing, the, the biggest challenge I thought at the start was going to be the proportions. And yet it's also one of my favorite sort of subjects for proportions because there is a nice colonnade in the front of this, this neoclassical building. And I find columns an easier subject to draw in proportion. And then a group of columns, in this case, uh, six columns across the, the front of the portico, to capture the, the proportions of the space, the, the rectangle that those six columns occupy. And once you've got that element accurately drawn in proportion, it makes a really good reference point then for what goes around it, whether it's more of that actual building or other buildings that we can see, or even the subjects such as crowds or cars or, or lighting or whatever in the street. So with this one, once I've got the portico done and then the pediment on top, which uh, looking at them now looks, looks slightly too large, uh, maybe slightly too high, although I did check the angles with my pen and they seemed okay. Maybe it's just that I don't have as thick a band of dark around the, the edge that's doing it. But then I get this drum. Now, this is the part of the building that I was most, if apprehensive is the right word, because proportionally, it's a fairly high drum for the scale of the, the dome on top, which sits on top of a smaller drum again. 
And so it has a somewhat elongated appearance, I think, compared to what we would normally expect to see in a neoclassical building uh, or a Renaissance building that, that has a, a dome on a drum. And so the challenge is to get the proportions right because knowing that I'm already thinking, oh, it's fairly, it looks fairly elongated to me, that the dome sits very high, it's easy for that to influence me and to push the, the columns up a bit higher and end up with a, even a greater degree of elongation at the end. So I'm, I'm working very hard to align the width, which is the other thing, of course, because how high something looks does depend on the width. So the first challenge is also to get the width of these columns with their foreshortening as they curve around on each side. Correct. The other thing to remember as we draw a scene such as this, where there's a, a circular shape moving upwards, is that the perspective theory says that the curves or round shapes that we see edge on look as though they're a straight line. As they move higher and higher, they become rounder and rounder and rounder. And so all of the, all of the lines that towards the base of the dome and the drum are looking uh, more of, a, of an arc, more of a curve. As, as they get higher and higher, they curve more and more. Now, speaking of domes, it's important to note with this dome that it's actually not a semicircle. Although we could sit a semicircular shape, I suspect, within it, it is extended into an elongated dome, into an elongated hemisphere at the top. And then we have that, that statue to draw on top. With, with statues such as this, it's really important that we don't try and draw figures, but we try and draw the effect of what we see. And I find the biggest uh, mistake I most often see, besides the fact of just too many lines for too small a space as people try and draw a figure, is that the head is drawn too large, too low down, and then there just isn't room to put the body and the feet before the pedestal. So whenever you're drawing um, an architectural sculptor, always make the head half the size that you think it will be and a bit higher than you think it needs to be. And then I always leave a slight gap between the head and the shoulders. And I can always add a dot just if I think it needs a neck, but generally I find it actually looks more credible like that. This is not life drawing. We're creating the effect of an architectural figure that's uh, seen from some distance. And the same goes for the figures I draw on the front of the pediment, uh, just at the very end when I, in fact, had almost forgotten about them. And it's the same principle with this sculptural group here. I, I presume it's a, a fountain, possibly, of, of some sort. It looks as though it could be, but I, I can't actually remember the detail of it. I did surprisingly enough, drawing the, the violinist and the, I think, oboe player who, who were busking in the, in the square because they certainly added a, a really quite beautiful note, haha, <laughs> pun there, uh, quite beautiful note to our, to our time spent in the gendarme marked. Unfortunately, it was a very overcast day, but it was a very hot, steamy overcast day. It was uh, over 30 degrees this day in Berlin. And then so I'm just establishing the figures and because I can't draw the lower part of the building and I can't draw the stairs, it is very important when we have objects in front of our building that overlap the building that we don't go lower than, um, than we have space to, that we reserve adequate blank paper for whatever needs to go. I actually did forget that when I was doing the extreme right of that front portico, but fortunately, the object that was there was a dark bush, so I could just bring it over the, over the top of the column that I drew. Sometimes we just luck out with our mistakes. I didn't bring this front-facing portico out f quite far enough. I, I didn't have the, the statue uh, to the right quite far enough. It's a couple of millimetres too much to the left. And then I aligned the front column of that front portico with the statue, according to the reference, which meant it also was back too far. And I realised it when I was then doing the roof in that it didn't actually, didn't actually come out as far as it needed to, to have the same proportions that the reference had. 
So I'm really enjoying the amount of detail I'm able to use. And I find that in fact, what's happening is I'm drawing a bit more slowly because I can draw more detail. And because I'm drawing more slowly, the nib of the pen is in contact with the paper for longer and therefore more ink flows out. So I'm getting a slightly thicker line than I normally get. And therefore it's a, it's a darker line and there's a, a more even flow of ink. So I'm actually quite surprised at how dark my line is. And if I had looked at this, I wouldn't have thought it was a 0.1 millimeter pen. I'm drawing this with a Copic multi-liner, one of their disposable fine liners. And so now I'm deliberately drawing a little bit faster because I'm wanting a lighter line. I'm wanting a line that, that sits further back than what I've drawn so far because this detail does sit further back and also it's not really the, the focal point. I want to give some sense of the, the architectural context of my subject, but I still want this, this tower, the dome, the portico that sits in front of it to stand proud as the main subject and to visually have this lovely vertical feel to it. So I do want this section to the side to feel a bit further away. And I do a little bit of hatching just to indicate the, the uh, shade on it, but I make sure I keep it very light. And at this point, I realize that I haven't done the figures in the pediment, so I, I do those. I had trouble actually getting this line as light as I would have liked. This is the only part where I felt the line was a bit heavier than what I really wanted it to be. And then I realized there was a little bit of this ornamental railing. Now, if you look at the sort of detail that's in the photo, you'll notice that, that I've only, again, gone for the effect of that raw time. But there was this strong circular pattern, this, this swirling, curving pattern. So I did seek to replicate that. Now, I'm doing some uh, line work on the dome to replicate the local color, the actual color. I'm not using it for shade or shadow. And... Sometimes where there is a nice color contrast, we can use our hatching for that. It's not just for, for things that are in the shade or casting a shadow. And now I think I'll, for the same reason, do a little bit of the buildings that are on the right-hand side of the French church, but again, a very light touch and a lighter touch than from the left-hand side because these are further back yet again. In some ways, I might have picked up my 0.1 millimeter pen that's half dry because it would have been easier to get a scratchier line for these buildings, which I think um, would have worked better. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. What do you think? I did one thing differently and it gave me so much more enjoyment and I think so many more options available with this drawing of the French Cathedral in Berlin. Why not have a go? It's on my channel community page, the reference photo, so you can screenshot and see how, see how you go. And if you don't draw with a 0 0.1, why not try that and see how you go? But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.